Hi. My name is Dharmendra Rai, and I am Mumbai's first mind map trainer. Welcome to yet another video on my web series, Odyssey, my journey from being a super successful trainer to becoming a super successful trainer and author. The title of this video is Most Thick Books Are Useless. If you are a primary researcher who has a lot of time, energy and money on his hands, then go ahead and do some research on this. But I don't think most people would need to do a great amount of research on this. Next time you're in a cocktail party, ask your friends and acquaintances what's the last book they've read. If that book is more than 200 pages, the chances are very high that they won't even be able to tell you in any impressive detail what they have learned from that book. If you need more research, hunt for it. If you don't read, don't think you need more research, continue watching this video. So I'm gonna give you three reasons why most thick books are useless because of which you should write only thin books. The first reason, again, I don't think any great research is needed for people to realize that most people in the world who have mobile phones don't use their mobile phones. Their mobile phones use them. They are like slaves on an electronic leash. They are slaves to a machine. They have corrupted their brains. They have sold their brains. They have reduced their brains. They have burned their brains. They have burned their thinking power and surrendered everything to their mobile phones. They hardly read the printed book or they hardly read an ebook. In such an environment, how would you expect them to read 200 pages? It would be a completely illogical conclusion of yours to think that they will read 200 pages when on an average month they read next to nothing. The second reason is when they see a thick book, they have an intuitive repulsion to it because plenty of people are just not interested in reading. And if they see a book, if they go to a bookshop and they see a book with a nice cover and a nice title and pick up that book, if they're going to see that it's a very thick book, they're just going to put it back. If they're buying an ebook in the product description, there's a good chance that they will read the number of pages that your book has. And if it's more than 200 pages or more than 300 pages, the chances are very high that they will have some misgiving about it. So I suggest you stick to writing thin books. The third reason is more from the author's point of view rather than the reader's point of view. The bigger your book is, the more time it's going to take for you to write it. We are in a world where attention is in very scarce supply. You may write the best book in the world on a particular subject, but you may not make any money out of it. You may not get any fame out of it. You may not become a bigger influencer than you are because of that book, because that's how crazy and difficult the world is today for anybody try to mark, trying to market anything. So if you are writing a thin book, then you're reducing your risk. So what's a thin book? 
there's no clear definition to that because books come in various sizes. The page sizes vary. But I would intuitively say try not to write a book which has more than 150 pages. None of my books has more than 150 pages. This is my first book, the Thin Mind Map book, and it's really thin. It looks ultra thin because the size of the paper is massive. So you can see it's, it's a very thin book. At the same time, it's a very attractive book because it's very attractively designed. And since it's thin, it encourages people to read it. There are some people who will be unattracted by this book because of the size. These are people who want to show off that they can read thick books and they do a lot of reading. But the chances are that these guys are not really your target market. And there are very few such people. This is my second book. This is printed by Amazon Print on Demand. Again, less than 150 pages. You can see intuitively when people pick up this book, they'll think, okay, this is something that I can try to finish. So that's my second book, The Invisible Selling Book. And the third book, again, is less than 100 pages. I don't have a hard copy of that to show you. So let me mention three big reasons why you should write only thin books. If you look at some authors and some books in the past that have been successful, let me take the first example. There was a docudrama. It was a docudrama not a documentary made on Arnold Schwarzenegger called Pumping Iron. Now, I have met plenty of fans of Arnold Schwarzenegger who are not as big fans of Arnold as I am, but they claim to be fa fans of Arnold Schwarzenegger who don't even know that Pumping Iron, the docudrama, is based on Pumping Iron, the book. So the book was written by George Butler before the docudrama. But many people don't even know, even today, after several decades have passed, that first the book came and then the docudrama came. After the docudrama came, the book saw much higher sales because plenty of people saw the docudrama and they were interested in reading the book. So what's happened here is he's launched something that's complicated, and a book is complicated for plenty of people. And then he has launched something simple, which is the docudrama. It's much easier to digest. It's much easier for people to see a docudrama than to read a book. So he's, he, he's done the reverse thing of what he's supposed to do. If he would have launched the docudrama first, and then after some time, maybe after six months, maybe after, after one year, launched the book, this combination would have proved much, much more profitable to George Butler. Let's take another big example, the Harry Potter series. No matter how well the book sold, they sold much more after the Harry Potter series were released. So again, if J.K. Rowling would have stuck to making the movie first and then sold the book, she would have been even richer as a billionaire than she is today. And the third example is Yuval Harari. Yuval Harari has the, the first book that he wrote and that got him worldwide acclaim was Sapiens. Then he wrote Homo Deus, and then he wrote the thinnest book out of the three, that's 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. And recently, he's made a comic book of sapiens. So again, he's going in the opposite direction. Now you'll say this structure of launching something complicated first and then something simple has worked for you well. Well, that's ignoring the law of large numbers. Maybe it's worked. Maybe if he would have launched the cartoon book first, it would have worked better. We don't know, but the it's 
very very logical to assume that in most cases the process of launching something simpler before launching something more complicated would definitely be much more effective also from an author's point of view it gives you a chance to come back to the market again and again and again in marketing parlance it's called coming with a story to the public you got one thick book you spent 5 years of your life writing it maybe it becomes a success but after that what the next young author on the block is going to knock your book off sooner or later then what do you do do you go back to the drawing board for another 5 or 10 years that doesn't doesn't appear to be a very viable strategy whereas if you are an expert on a subject and you a micro segment that subject and you write a thin book on it you have a lot of ammunition to write plenty of small books focusing on micro segments of that particular subject for example this is the thin mind map book an introduction my next mind map book can be the thin mind map book or or, or I, i need not start with the the words the thin mind map book i i can say mind maps for chief executives mind maps for fortune 500 executives mind maps for startups mind maps for business creativity and i can launch 1000 books because that's much that's how much information i have inside of me because i've been a mind map trainer for 10 years so when you do something of this sort this is going to continuously create a noise in the marketplace it's going to make people sit up and notice because everybody wants to see what's new in the market the third benefit of writing a thin book from an author's point of view is it makes a lot of sense to market the book by giving a free copy of that book to vip clients for me vips would include chief executives of companies hr heads of companies learning and development heads of companies and i get an opportunity to give this give them my book for free uh, it's a quality a transaction uh, rather than me just going to them and saying hey i'm a mind map trainer and i'm an invisible selling trainer and how can i help you this is something that is much more tangible uh, it's a much more fruitful interaction from the client's point of view and that is something that you can do if the book is thin and it's not very expensive if you're going to make a thick book and that book is going to cost you 1000 rupees then your cost of giving out these gifts is going to be prohibitive so i trust you found this video useful in order to get the next video in your inbox please ensure that you subscribe to my youtube channel till we meet again happy mind mapping